थैंक यू चेयरपर्सन सर सो डिलीशियस फूड उसके बाद अच्छा नींद भी होता है सो माई फाइनेंशियल डिस्क्लोजर इज दिस बट आई गॉट एन एकेडमिक डिस्क्लोजर टू मेक सो इसी मेरे पी एस एम और पैथोलॉजी में नंबर कम आया करता था क्योंकि ऑल द लेक्चर्स इज टू अकर आफ्टर लंच सो आफ्टर टेन फिफ्टीन मिनट्स आई यूज टू बी इन अ डिफरेंट वर्ल्ड सो पोस्ट लंच सेशन आर दी मोस्ट चैलेंजिंग सो आई ट्राई माई बेस्ट टू कीप यू अवेक सो यू कैन लिसन टू डॉक्टर पाठक्स टॉक सो दिस इज दी आई एम गोन टू टॉक अबाउट रियल वर्ल्ड एविडेंस um there are multiple real world evidence um and then i will um, tell you about a little bit about um a uh, few of my cases because there are practical problems which occur ki aisa hone se kya karna hai this is nowhere it's written in the books nowhere is written in the guidelines nowhere is written in rcts what what is the next step so so idec asp is best suited we know that it tackles both fasting and pp pp is very important for us given our lifestyle given our type of food that we eat and um, initially i know what this had started it is twice a day but i always had the view point that it should be initiated first once a day for those patients for most of the patients actually and then we can escalate it to, to twice a day so you have got multiple rcts um, is one of the most widely studied um, insulin um, co formulation or the only one so you have got evidence from real world evidence and rcts so real world evidence is very important because rcts mein ek result aaya real world mein similar result aaya then we have full confidence in that molecule if there is discordant and mind you there are lot of um, instances in medical literature ki rct mein acha hai real world mein nahi aaya real world mein acha hai rct mein nahi aaya so if both support each other then we have more confidence in the molecule so there are multiple real world evidence i'm just going to tell you about a few of them so um this is the first one i think it's uh, dr kalra and um, yeah, the pointer is not working it's uh, dr kalra and um, um manush patim barua i think this was retrospective observational study of patients with type 2 diabetes whether they are on tablets or insulin switching to idec asp for about 48 for 48 patients for about 1 year okay so the hb1c drop you can see is significant now the important thing is this was achieved at a lower insulin dose and most of the real world evidence supports it ki hb1c drop hua lekin insulin dose utna hi raha isse ya usse kam raha that's the an important uh, observation noted so this was presented in ada by jyoti dev so type 2 diabetes about more than 150 patients duration of diabetes 11 years so you can see again here hb1c drop quite significant about 1% there was a fasting um, blood sugar drop close to 40 there was no pp here but for me pp is also important so i'll highlight some of the real world evidence which suggest the pp data as well this is another one uh, um, which was presented in idf again more close to 300 patients Uh, with diabetes of 11 years and uh, followed up for close to one year now here the pp is here so if you say oha only so you can see the hb1c drop is close to 2% so oha le rahe hain tablets le rahe hain ab aap insulin i dec as diye hain close to 2% uh, hb1c drop but look at the fasting sugar drop is about 45 and pp is close to 130 so that's that's relevant because if we just use a basal insulin only you will get this but you may not get this so that's very important that you get a big big um, postprandial drop as well the one thing of note which i observed and i'll tell you later on that patients who are on insulin also get this so this was another study uh, wherein it was compared idegas versus glargin u100 and versus glargin u300 so you can see here the drop in the hb1c was most with the idec asp so about 15% drop in the hb1c as opposed to 10 and 9 uh, for 100 and 300 unsurprisingly you have got a big pp drop here but you have also got an equally big fasting sugar drop so you are tackling both fasting and pp with this and as i said again the, look at the insulin dose requirements it is much less as compared to others so that's the 
good thing about it is tackle fasting and PP, and as well as you get the HB on C drop. So the other thing is hypoglycemia. That seems to be in between U100 and U300, the hypoglycemia. Mind you, if you add a rapid acting insulin, you, one would expect that there will be slightly more hypoglycemia, but there wasn't. So the ARISE study is one of the largest multicenter, multinational uh, trial with IDEGASP. And here you can see the countries, uh, Malaysia, India, Saudi Arabia, Australia, South Africa. Uh, so it was the physician's prerogative to start treatment with IDEGASP. Globally, there was about 1.4% drop, and for Indian patients, it was 1.6%. The fasting sugar drop was about 50 globally, as well as for Indian patients as well, so similar. Now, this is the important bit. So patients who were uncontrolled on OADs, you get about 1.9% drop in HB1C. Who were uncontrolled on basal insulin, you get a slightly higher drop in HB1C. That is important. So you would expect that somebody is already on insulin, you or insulin the chali raha or kya additional milega. So you get a bigger drop. And this comes at a much less hypoglycemia. So if you see, the, this is non-severe hypoglycemia. So at four weeks before the study, uh, starting the uh, IDEGAS, this were the number of um, non-severe hypoglycemic episodes, which came down to 162. And later on, it came down furthermore. Severe hypoglycemic episodes, look at the drastic reduction in the severe hypoglycemic episodes. So you're getting an HB1C drop, you're getting much less hypoglycemia, and you're targeting the PP sugar as well. SMART study is another study uh, by Jyoti Dev, patients um, who received um, IDEGASP. So again, insulin treated about 1.8%, and OAD treated 1.7%. So it didn't matter really if you're on tablets or insulin, you would expect a similar drop in HB1C with a lower dose, but with less hypoglycemia. So change in fasting sugar was about 50. Change in PP breakfast was 82. PP lunch was about 74. Again, hypoglycemia. So as the um, um, time progressed, you get much less hypoglycemia. See, these were the events before starting IDEGASP, and this was 12 months, one year after starting. Severe hypoglycemia before starting is this, and at 12 months, virtually none. So I think starting IDEGASP in patients with type 2 diabetes, so um, if you ask me whom to start, would you choose particular patients? Now, the question of cost, of course, in our country will come up, and we have to weigh in. But first, what I, what I tend to um, um, decide when I see a patient is that, and I want it for myself as well if I develop diabetes and have got um, HB1C, high HB1C, is what's the best molecule for me? So I will think that this is the best molecule for this person. Now if the person can afford, I'll give it. Cannot afford, then I will look at alternatives rather than finding out subgroups where I can use. But if you push me, the subgroups are, there are uh, flex, um, busy lifestyle, erratic food habits, mainly PP sugar is more, elderly patients where, um, you know, starting up, uh, intensifying from basal to basal plus, you require two pens, here it is one pen, which makes it much more convenient. So those were the um, real world evidence. So now I'm going to show you some real life, my cases, uh, and the problems I had, and the mistakes I made. So the balanced view, if we look at it, what's the advantages? It addresses the PP sugar. So as an insulin initiator molecule, it addresses PP. Many cases, once daily dose might be enough. And if you want to intensify, you can intensify with the same pen. And you have got robust, robust data, RCT, real world, thousands and lakhs of patients. But the downside, aapne shuru kiya, fasting thik hai, PP bad gaya. Now, that's a real problem. I still struggle with a small minority of patients who have this. Now, if I increase the IDEGAS, PP might come down, but fasting might drop below 70. So that is a problem. How to tackle that? Another problem was asked by um, one PGT to me. Sir, you're giving IDEGAS before lunch and before dinner. So you're giving two close together. 
there will be stacking. Stacking means there will be hypoglycemia. So that's another concept which we have to clear. So let us come to uh, two of them. But first, importantly, the importance whenever you have to start insulin, this is what I tell myself and I tell my students as well, insulin churu karne ke pehle patient ka diet history lena bohot jaruri hai. During weekdays, what does he or she take? During the weekends and holiday, what does she he or she take? And what time that that person take? That is crucial, as is highlighted in this case. So, ye patient, I have not gone into great detail, otherwise it will cloud the main issue. So, uh, this was a 50-year-old housewife, homemaker, fasting sugar 220, PP 250 on OHS, sulfonylurea, metformin. Now. Clear answer to this. Are is kato fasting yada hai, PP ka different hai, to say basal insulin is the answer. Correct. So I started basal insulin. But when I started basal insulin, her blood sugars began to, fasting sugars came around 90 to 100, but she began to have hyperglycemia during the daytime. Mistake? My mistake. Why? Diet history not taken properly. So I did a CGMS. Now if you see, uh, this green zone is the zone where it should be. Now this is 6 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning. This is 8 p.m., this is 10 p.m. As you can see, during the daytime, blood sugars are nearly close to the green line. Something happens here and the PP sugar goes up and it stays up throughout the night. So whenever I do the CGMS, I read the CGMS data I can understand what is happening, then I turn the result to the patient and I tell them, The patients themselves say, Answer is there and you can target it. So what happened for this lady was, in the morning, husband, businessman, so I have a very small snack, tea biscuit. And lunchtime, nobody is at home, so I have very light snack, um, uh, lunch. In the evening, everybody comes back, and we have a big, hearty dinner. So that is the reason you are getting this spike. So how have I addressed it? I have just given a basal insulin. The basal insulin se kya hua? This fasting sugar came down, but the daytime sugars, it dropped below this range, in the hyperglycemic range. So what I should have done, taken a proper diet history first, then basal ke saath ek bolus jodna chahiye tha to tackle this postprandial surge at dinner time. Kyunki uska problem udhari hai. I cannot ask her to change her lifestyle completely. It's very difficult to change lifestyle completely. Easy for me to stand in this podium and say, ja aap ek dam achche se um, only green vegetables lo or roj ek ghanta doro. So always is not possible. So you have to tailor it to the patient in front of you. So basal plus bolus would have been good for her. But I, did, I gave only basal. So I changed it to an idea gas, which I directed, I gave her uh, before dinner. And that seemed to solve the problem. Now, the other problem is, um, in Bengal particularly, um, and it is probably applicable to rest of our country as well, weekday and weekend food timing and type of food is completely different. So that's where the idea gap, if you take once a week, you can target it. So typical weekday working people, they take a big bowl of rice in the morning. Lunch is usually very small and dinner, they come and have roti. And on Sundays, reverse. Breakfast is light, but lunch is very heavy. So if I write in the prescription, now if you see in the weekday, the surge, postprandial surge is maximum in the breakfast. And during the weekend, the postprandial surge is maximum at lunchtime. So if I write in the prescription, you take rhizodic just before breakfast, to wo Sunday ko bhi breakfast ke pehle lenge. then you will get hypoglycemia here on weekend on the holidays. So I write in my prescription, working days, take it before breakfast, weekend, holidays, take it before lunch, explain to the patient, takes more, not more than one minute. And that will solve most of your hypoglycemia problems. Then, next patient, and this is the last case, I think. So, premix 42 and 44. And patient was on citaglipine, metformin, voglibose, HB1C 8.33, fasting 133, PP is high. So, here the problem is 
fasting is okay lunch pp is high but the patient was having hyperglycemic symptoms before lunch so even if i change it to ida gas before breakfast and dinner same problem persists so what was the problem problem was the diet history so again light breakfast patient was taking heavy lunch heavy dinner so i'm giving ida gas here and here so patient was getting hypoglycemia here so that was the problem so if i switch and give the ida gas here and here before lunch and before dinner that will sort the postprandial surge that will prevent the pre lunch hypoglycemia from occurring and that i will show you the result with that what happened oh i don't have that sorry so with that the patient's pp sugar seemed to normalize he didn't have any pre lunch hypoglycemia so the question asked by my pgt ya aap pass pass mein de rahe hain long acting insulin so will it beget stacking insulin jump ke stacking ho jayega hypoglycemia hoga so let me clarify that um, question because this has been asked quite often so if you see here if you inject insulin this is insulin level so if i inject a rapid acting insulin insulin level goes up like this at this point sugar level is low because the insulin level is quite high so then the insulin level begins to come down so sugar is going up now so insulin level would have come down right here but after 2 hours before the action was over of the rapid insulin i check the blood sugar are sugar to bad raha hai then i give another shot of a rapid acting insulin my aim was to get the insulin level here but pushing down at this level the blood sugar is very high so you will get yo yo effect if you miss one dose but for a long acting insulin if you miss one dose it will only have a small jerk again if you give double dose the insulin level goes sky high here this is the stacking effect occurring now if you give a double dose same dose again you will have a very little impact because of the long acting nature of the insulin so that's the thing which explains the stacking now pgt ko samajh mein nahi aaya puri tarah se to wo bola yes sir so you can make out from the eyes nahi kisko samajh mein nahi aaya to bola tumne sach baat bolo samjhe nahi to kaise samjha hai so that's why i hope you follow cricket so i've given the example of cricket so i'll tell you how So this is Sachin Tendulkar. That's his batting average, 53.79. In the last match, so this is a long-acting basal insulin, Sachin Tendulkar. In the last match, he made 74 runs. If he had made zero runs, his average would be 53.6. So see, there's nothing much difference. If he had made 200 runs, it will be 53.85, something like this. Not much difference. On the other hand, Sikhar Dhawan, when he first started. in his three matches his average was 81 if he had made zero in one of them his average would have dropped to 46 so this is a bolus insulin ye baat acche se samajh mein aa gayi unko pgt ko so i think the real world evidence which has shown is important it should be similar to the rct which is there and i have shown you some snippets some cases wherein i had difficulty in adjusting and i have told you how best to go around it if you know the pkpd of the insulin you can deal with it accordingly with that i and thank you very much